Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching my channel and your support and everything, guys. I really appreciate everything. You have no idea. Thank you for all of you who have emailed me. It's crazy. Some of you have emailed me with uh, all your amazing cars, you know. Uh, one person was from England who emailed me his amazing, uh, you know, 190E and the pictures and kind of words. So thank you so much for that, Mark. And a couple other people, you know, one was, one was from Belgium and stuff like that you guys are amazing I mean I really appreciate everything and some of you guys are from Africa you know thank you for all your support as well you know you guys are awesome so anyways in this video I'll be replacing the idler arm on this 1991 Mercedes 190e the idler arm is actually bad on this car uh, and you know this right front wheel has play so when you try to you know move the wheel at uh, 3 and 9 o'clock position has loose it's actually loose so it's not good so we have to replace that it's also a safety issue so um, you will see in this video that I <laughs> I've run into a problem you know when trying to replace this idler arm uh, and it's crazy uh, but you maybe when you replace your idler arm whether it's a 190 uh, W140 or you know W124 whatever it, it maybe you will not run into an issue like this like I did it also depends on the engine application so anyways keep watching i hope you enjoyed this video series and uh, you know let's save classic mercedes let's save classic cars it's amazing guys um, yeah stay tuned uh, the wind is so bad here today in washington that i actually drove my 190e and uh, some of the branches of the trees they were just like literally falling falling off I, as I was driving like that's how crazy the wind is uh, here today um, and unfortunately it actually makes me really sad because uh, today I wanted to work on my Kijatronic system and because of this thing I, I can't do it uh, I was trying to open the hood and as soon as I opened the hood like it was just like going crazy like that so I was like you know what let me wait for a better day and that's why today I'm going to be replacing this idler arm and I'm about to uh, jack this car up and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. suspension uh, if we go down there then you see this arm and it goes up and that's up there is your idler arm I'm also using a trailing arm from a W123 to as a chuck all right so Here's uh, the idler arm on the passenger side that we need to replace. Uh, I believe it's a 22 millimeter. And this heat shield is probably gonna be in the way, so I might need to remove it as well. Um, probably, looks like it. So, anyways, this thing is bad, it needs to be replaced. So, let's go ahead and get this done. Pull this bolt out and we'll remove the bushing kit. Using a 22 millimeter socket, I already loosened this by the way, so I had to use a, a breaker bar for that. Also, you might have to hold it from the top as well. Unfortunately, but you'll have to bear with me, my uh, little flashlight died, so uh, there's a 22 millimeter um, wrench on top and socket right here, and I'm ready to actually 
loosen this thing. The nut is coming out. Now you can take this bolt out. So I already removed one piece, okay? You simply grab the pliers right here or channel locks and just wiggle it and pull it back down. Now I have a problem, I cannot, I'm, like I said, I'm really sorry, my light is gone, but I cannot push this bolt out because on top is a, uh, a catalytic converter, so uh, I'm really lost. I don't want to remove the catalytic converter to remove this bolt, uh, so I'm going to try to uh, chisel out this uh, top piece and uh, hopefully that way I'll be able to move it out of the way uh, somehow. All right, so um, here's the problem. Okay, so there's a, a actually a catalytic converter right there on top, and because of that thing, you cannot remove that bolt all the way out. So at this point, uh, my new kit came with a new bolt, so I just started cutting this thing uh, and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty crazy, but uh, you know it is what it is steering dampener uh, so I could get my grinder down in there uh, because I had to cut that thing and it's almost out I'm about to take that bolt out and the whole thing and uh, uh, when, we, when I install this whole thing back I'm just gonna put the bolt the other way uh, and it's gonna be okay that way I won't have to worry about removing the uh, uh, calorie converters and all that stuff. You guys have it, it's out. Now I can move it out of the way and as you can see uh, it, I can move it all the way down here. Okay. And then just move it up and down and now I can just remove this bolt. Okay. And then this I'll show you in a second how to remove that uh, top idler arm bushing. So there it is. Uh, I already removed the bottom uh, bushing. Uh, sorry for you guys, it's upside down. That's how I'm laying here on the on the ground. Unfortunately, there's no other way. So to to remove the top uh, bushing, you just literally grab like a chisel and, and just hammer this thing out, and it will come out. That's fine, no problem. So, unfortunately I can't show it to you right now. I mean, I just, uh, it's like limited space and it's really hard uh, and I need to get this job done. So, I'm gonna take it out. Actually, I already did pound it out. So, I'm gonna try to remove it right now. Uh, let's see, get lucky. Yeah, there you go. Uh, literally came out right there and make sure Jesus. <laughs> uh, so anyways, make sure that there's nothing stuck inside. And I can still feel the piece inside. There's still a piece of rubber inside. So I need to make sure it's out of that spot. All right. So I'm going to carefully uh, use like a punch or something and punch it out. Uh, that piece is sitting in there still. So I have to go ahead and take it out. And then we'll be ready to press new bushings in, which is pretty easy. Alright guys, so this is the old uh, piece. Okay, and be careful when you're cutting this bolt, right? Because you can get a grinder in there, but be careful, don't uh, score anything else. Uh, and then this is a new kit right here. I'll be installing, it comes with the bolt, uh, and a nut, and these two bushings okay so before doing that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the surface where you know, on the inside where this the bushings are gonna be sitting and um, yeah we're gonna install uh, our new bushings
I just cleaned the surface on the inside right there and I'm about to put some silicone grease in there that way the bushings can go in easy so I decided to just coat the bushing uh, in the silicone grease uh, and I'm about to press this in okay so simply just uh, grab the bushing Set it in there. It might be a little difficult, so you would probably have to use like a small hammer to press it in or like a C clamp. But I'm gonna need two hands because I'm gonna try to press this thing in by hand and then use uh, like a small hammer to just uh, press press it all the way in. It's not that bad, honestly. Okay guys, so what I decided to do is uh, I also installed the bottom um, bushing and right now I'm going to use a hammer to actually hammer the bottom one in and then I'll use a bolt and nut to press the other one in because that one has limited space, it's, I can't really get to it from the top because of the cats and uh, a lot of heat shields there and uh, I don't really have a small hammer that would really probably do the job so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, instead of doing that I have a hammer here Try to start it straight. As straight as possible. Okay, it's almost in. A little more. Alright, one side is in. Now we're gonna grab a bolt and nut and then we're gonna turn them together and we're gonna press that other bushing in all right guys here's the setup I have a 22 millimeter wrench on top holding the nut and there's a bolt right here also 22 millimeter and I'm just uh, you know uh, pressing this other uh, uh, bushing in uh, from the top so it's a lot easier so right now literally you just gotta turn this bolt uh, while counter holding this uh, nut and that's it this is gonna actually uh, go into the spot where it's supposed to be uh, upper bushing so I'll, I'm about to finish this job uh, actually I will not finish the job tonight I'll come back tomorrow but I want to finish uh, pressing this bushing in completely You're gonna feel when it's all the way in. The socket is gonna stop. The ratchet. Oh, a good workout for your arms. Okay, let's see. A little bit more. Nope, that's it. It's not going anywhere else. Yep, that is it. And now I can go ahead and loosen this up let's try to loosen this so this time I have to kind of hold this uh, wrench to take it out but I'm just gonna take out this uh, bolt and nut right now because I'm done pressing these in and uh, once I install the actual arm onto the idler uh, I will have to uh, you know put some washers and whatnot so uh, I'm gonna take this out as soon as I take it out I'll show you how this whole thing looks and we'll come back tomorrow to finish it all right guys this is next morning and finally there's the wind is a lot better it's not as horrible as it was yesterday and we can see a lot better today as well so 
I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this job and uh, replacing the idler arm and I uh, have a couple of things to clean a couple of parts and then I'll put everything back together and then we'll see how everything is hopefully everything is good All right guys, I'm about to install this bolt and this is the orientation, okay? The bolt is gonna go, uh, it's gonna go through the bottom basically. So you have a bolt, head, washer, then you have a cup, you have a small washer and you have a nut at the end. This nut is gonna be on top. This the head of the bolt is going to be on the bottom and as you can see in my case i will just be changing the orientation of the bolt i'm not changing the orientation of the hardware at all okay so in your case if your bolt if you decide to you know remove the catalytic converter and install the bolt you know the way how it was from the factory then the orientation of the hardware is going to be the same the, this cup is always going to be on top and then there's going to be a washer and then not uh, and then you know a bolt head right here and then this washer this bigger washer uh, is going to always be on the bottom so that's the uh that's how this thing is and uh, i'll show you everything once again um when i install this bad boy so the cup goes on top And then we're gonna put small washers on top. Washer goes on top of the cup. Alright. And then this idler arm itself is gonna go on top. And then afterwards you're gonna put bolt through. So the only thing is I might think of is that I might have to shorten this bolt uh, because of that heat shield. I'm not sure just yet, but the heat shield has to go on there. So I might have to shorten, but as you can see, I also put a copper paste. I didn't put it on threads. I just put it on, uh, you know, the actual surface that has no threads. That way it doesn't get seized up in future, just in case. Uh, and then like I said, oh, this thing will just go through like that, okay? Like so. Um, and uh, uh, what else? You can also, a couple of notes is you can, if you want, you can put some blue thread locker on the threads if you want to. All right, guys, so this is the final product. As you can see, everything is back together, heat shields and all that, so it's amazing. Uh, and uh, the only thing is uh, keep in mind that with the uh, heat shields you will have to bend them slightly that way they're not touching that upper nut once you steer the car okay so as of right now if i try to move it it's fine you know it's not making a contact you know or anything like that so it's very good okay. and it's nice and tight as well so um yeah, that's really awesome. I'm really happy about that. Right now, I'll just have to uh, reattach the uh, uh, steering dampener, and that will be pretty much it, guys. Okay, so the final thing since I'm underneath, uh, I'm applying, I'm cleaning the boots off of the tie rods and ball joints and I'm applying silicone grease. Uh, that way my boots will last a very long time. They will not crack, they will not go bad. So this is really good stuff. 
you want to do this to your car as well um, especially if the car sits 10 years later you can come back to this and you can see that the boots are still gonna be fine because you took care of them so yeah um, I might make a separate video on this but uh, yeah the main thing is clean the boots and apply silicone grease onto everything here good stuff as you can see also uh, greased up the boots with silicone grease uh, the ball jet is greased up right there and also the outer tie right so that's awesome and eventually I will clean this wheel well uh, area here and also preserve that stuff I already did that thing with uh, rear uh, wheel wells as you remember if you were watching my wheel bearing uh, replacement video uh, so you already know that all right guys so after the wheel is back on uh, let's check for play and there is no play the steering was the steering wheel is unlocked and there's no play unlike before that i wish i had my camera on the tripod before i did that but it's amazing no more play this is just the whole steering is moving right here but when you move it fast there's nothing so that's good success guys i'm really happy about that and uh, i didn't have to remove the cats which is amazing all right because that would have been a lot more work you know all right guys i just came back from the test drive everything is amazing no noises uh everything is great steering feels really good too so um, i hope you enjoyed this video series i'm sorry it was really difficult to film especially yesterday uh, during high winds and uh, it was really dark as well so but hopefully uh, all the information that you saw in this video was helpful so thank you so much uh, for watching my videos and uh, i'll see you in the next one also keep in mind if you have a different engine uh, installed in your car like for example if you have like an m102 engine installed in a 190e it might be a little different you know it might you might not need to like cut the bolt or do other stuff to it unlike mine i have m103 engine and it still has factory catalytic converters so uh, they were in the way of the bolt so in order to save time i just went ahead and cut that bolt off and i was able to get my grinder in there so you just need to be patient you need to be careful and make sure you know what you're cutting and don't cut anything around that bolt uh, other than the bolt itself uh, so yeah anyways thank you so much for watching this video i will see you in the next one check out my playlists or, and other videos and don't forget to share this video thank you and take care